everybody in the room. region and to begin to move toward a forward and eventually acquire a nuclear acquiescing in Iran becoming uh, a stronger piece of the our relationship with China. Cyber warfare against tens of millions of... Senator Sanders, I want you to be able to respond. Pardon me? Uh, I think uh, that when he gets into that... He doesn't seem to be the type of guy to regret a lot. <laughs> well, I think he is already regretting what he did in Crimea and what he is doing in the Ukraine. I think he is really regretting the decline of his economy. And I think what he is trying to do now is save some face. But I think when Russians get killed in Syria and when he gets bogged down, I think the Russian people are going to give him a message that maybe they should come home, maybe they should start working with the United States to rectify the situation there. Se Secretary Clinton, on the campaign trail, about your ability to handle far more challenging crises as president. Well, I've taken responsibility for it. I did say it was a mistake. Uh, what I did was allowed by the State Department, but it wasn't the best choice. And I have been as transparent as I know to be, turning over 55,000 pages of my emails, asking that they be made public. And you're right, I am going to be testifying. I've been asking to testify for some time and to do it in public, which was not originally uh, agreed to. But let's just take a minute here and point out that this committee is basically an arm of the Republican National Committee. It is a partisan vehicle, as admitted by the House Republican Majority Leader, Mr. McCarthy, uh, to drive down my poll numbers. Big surprise. And that's what they have attempted to do. I am still standing. I am happy to be part of this debate. And I intend to keep talking about the issues that matter to the American people. You know, I, I believe strongly that we need to be talking about what people talk to me about. Like, how are we going to make college affordable? How are we going to pay down student Secretary, debt? How are we going to get health care for everybody? And Secretary get the cost Clinton, of prescription Secretary drugs Clinton with all due respect, it's a little hard. I mean, isn't it a little bit hard for you to call this just a partisan issue? There's an FBI investigation, and President Obama himself just two days ago said this is a legitimate issue. Well, I, didn't, I never said it wasn't legitimate. I said that I have answered all the questions, and I will certainly be doing so again before this committee, but I think it would be really unfair not to look at the entire picture. This committee has spent four and a half million dollars of taxpayer money and they said that they were trying to figure out what we could do better to protect our diplomats so that something like Benghazi wouldn't happen again. There were already seven committee reports about what to do. So Thank I think you. it's pretty clear what their 
obvious uh, goal go, is, go, go, but go. I'll be there. I'll answer their questions. But tonight, I want to talk not about Come my on. emails, but about what the American people want Senator, from the next president Senator of the United Sanders, States. Let me say this. Let me say, let me say something that may not be great politics. But I think the secretary is right. And that is that the American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. Thank you. Me too. Me too. <laughs> you know? The middle class Anderson. And let me say something about the media as well. I go around the country, talk to a whole lot of people. Middle class of this country is collapsing. We have 27 million people living in poverty. We have massive wealth and income inequality. Our trade policies have cost us millions of decent jobs. The American people want to know whether we're going to have a democracy or an oligarchy as a result of Citizens United. Enough of the emails. Let's talk about the real issues facing America. It's obviously very popular in this yeah. crowd. Anderson. Thank you. Hold on. It's very. And then, it, it, I know that that and, plays well in this room, but I got to be honest, Governor Chafee. For the record, on the campaign trail, you've said a different thing. You said this is a huge issue. Standing here in front of Secretary Clinton, are you willing to say that to her face? Absolutely. Uh, we have to repair American credibility after we told the world that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, which he didn't. So there's an issue of American credibility out there. So anytime someone's running to be our leader and a world leader, which the American president is, credibility is an issue out there with the world. And we have repair work to be done. I think we need someone that has the best in ethical standards as our next president. That's how I feel. Secretary Clinton, do you want to respond? No. Governor, Governor, no. Governor O'Malley. Again, it's popular in the room, but a lot of people do want to know these answers. Gover Governor O'Malley, you expressed uh, concern on the campaign trail that the Democratic Party is, and I quote, being defined by Hillary Clinton's email scandal. You heard her answer. Do you still feel that way tonight? I believe that now that we're finally having debates, Anderson, that we don't have to be defined by the email scandal and how long what the FBI is asking about. Instead, we can talk about affordable college, making college debt free, and all the issues, which is why, and I see the uh, chair of the DNC here, look how glad we are actually to be talking about the issues that matter most to people around their kitchen table. We need to get wages to go up. College more affordable. Thank you, and Governor. We make, need to make America 100% clean electric by 2050. I want to talk about issues of race in America. For that, I want to start off with Don Lemon. Don? All right, Anderson. Thank you very much. Not sure how to follow that. But this question is about something that has tripped some of the candidates up out on the campaign trail. Can you hear me? Can't hear me in the room. Arthur, okay, nice. here we go again. University As I said, school, not my question for the candidates is do black lives matter or do all lives matter? The question from Arthur <laughs> oh, in Des Moines well, is, do black lives matter or do all lives matter? Let's put that question to Senator Sanders. Black lives matter. And the reason, the reason those words matter is the African-American community knows that on any given day, some innocent person like Sandra Bland can get into a car, and then three days later, she's going to end up dead in jail or their kids are going to get shot. We need to combat institutional racism from top to bottom, and we need major, major reforms in a broken criminal justice system in which we have more people in jail than China. And I intend to tackle that issue to make sure that our people have education and jobs rather than jail cells. Governor, o Governor O'Malley, Governor O'Malley, the question from Arthur was, do black lives matter, do all lives matter? Yeah, and Anderson, the point that the Black Lives Matter movement is making is a very, very legitimate and serious point. And that is that as a nation, we have undervalued the lives of black lives, people of color. When I ran for mayor of Baltimore, I, and we had, we were burying over 350 young men every single year, mostly young and poor and black. 
And I said to our legislature at the time when I appeared in front of them as a mayor, that if we were burying white young poor men in these numbers, we would be marching in the streets and there would be a different reaction. Black Lives Matter, and we have a lot of work to do to reform our criminal justice system and to address race relations in our country. Secretary Clinton, what would you do for African Americans in this country that President Obama couldn't? Well, I think that President Obama has been a great moral leader on these issues and has laid out an agenda that has been obstructed by the Republicans at every turn. So what we need to be doing is not only reforming criminal justice, uh, I have talked about that at some length, including things like body cameras, but we also need to be following the recommendations of the commission that President Obama impaneled on policing. There is an agenda there that we need to be following up on. Similarly, we need to tackle mass incarceration and this may be the only bipartisan issue in the Congress this year. We actually have people on both sides of the aisle who have reached the same conclusion that we cannot keep imprisoning more people than anybody else in the world. But I believe that the debate and discussion has to go further, Anderson, because we've got to do more about the lives of these children. That's why I started off by saying we need to be committed to making it possible for every child to live up to his or her God-given potential. That is Thank really you, hard to do if you don't have early childhood education, Senator if you don't have schools yeah. that are able to meet the needs of the people or good housing. There's a long list. We need a new New Deal for communities of color. Senator Webb. No, I hope I get that kind of time here. Look, I, as the President of the United States, every life in this country matters. At the same time, I believe I can say to you, I have had a long history of working with the situation of African Americans. We're talking about criminal justice reform. I risked my political life raising the issue of criminal justice reform. When I ran for the Senate in Virginia in 06, I had Democratic Party political consultants telling me I was committing political suicide. We led that issue in the Congress. We started a national debate on it, and it wasn't until then that the Republican Party started joining in. I also represented a so-called war criminal, an African-American Marine who was, wounded, uh, who was uh, convicted of murder in Vietnam for six years. He took his life three years into this. I cleared his name after, after three years. Thanks, and sir. I put the African-American soldier on the mall. I made that recommendation and fought for it. So if you want someone who is, can stand up in front of you right now Thank and you. say, I have done the hard job, I have taken the risks, I am your person. Senator Sanders, let's talk about income can, inequality. Can I, can I, Wages and incomes are flat. You've argued that the gap between rich and poor is wider than at any time since the 1920s. We've had a Democratic president for seven years. What are you going to be able to do that President Obama didn't? Well, first of all, let's remember where we were when Bush left office. We were losing 800,000 jobs a month. And I know my Republican friends seem to have some amnesia on this issue, but the world's financial crisis was on the verge, the world's financial markets system was on the verge of collapse. That's where we were. Are we better off today than we were then? Absolutely. But the truth is that for the last 40 years, the great middle class of this country has been disappearing. And in my view, what we need to do is create millions of jobs by rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure, raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, a pay equity for women workers, end our disastrous trade policies, which have cost us millions of jobs, and make every public college and university in this country tuition free. Secretary, Anderson, Secretary Anderson, Clinton, I to jump I, I, in I'll, I'll let you jump Anderson, in a moment. Anderson. Everybody will get in on this in a moment. But Secretary Clinton, how would you address this issue? In all of candor, you and your husband are part of the 1%. How can you credibly represent the views of the middle class? Well, you know, both Bill and I have been very blessed. Uh, neither of us came from wealthy families, and we've worked really hard our entire lives. And I want to make sure every single person in this country has the same opportunities that he and I have had to make the most of their God-given potential and to have the chances that they should have in America for a good education, good job training, and then good jobs. I have a five-point economic plan because this inequality challenge we face, we have faced it at other points. It's absolutely right. It hasn't been this bad since the 1920s. 
But if you look at the Republicans versus the Democrats when it comes to economic policy, there is no comparison. Thank you. The economy does better when you have a Democrat in the White House, and that's why we need to have a Democrat in the White House in January 2017. Governor Malley wants you to go. Yep. Anderson, I want to associate myself.